We all love to build new and creative modern decks, but most people don't want to sell their left nut to pay for a new deck. So today, we're starting a new series called the PAF series because I care about your left nut. And today, we're looking at a deck called Mono White Affinity, or Tempered Steel Affinity, or one of those two. I don't know, call it whatever you want to call it. But it's pretty gangster. But the best part is, the deck's quite affordable at $137 for my version, although you could cut some corners and make the deck even cheaper than this. But let's start looking at some of the cards. So to start things off, the centerpiece of this deck is Steel Overseer, which can tap each turn to put a plus one, plus one counter on each artifact creature you control. And so not surprisingly, our deck's geared around just putting a ton of artifact creatures out. And to go along with this guy, we have two new cards. The first is Servo Exhibition from Kaladesh. For two mana, you drop in two 1-1 one, one artifact creature tokens. And the second card from Aether Revolt, Sram's Expertise. For four mana, you drop in three 1-1 one, one artifact creature tokens. And you also get a second ability, which allows you to play a card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So pretty good value. And on the surface, neither one of these cards seem that great. But with Steel Overseer, it works pretty well. And more importantly, we have another card, Tempered Steel. It's an enchantment that costs three that it gives all your artifact creatures plus two plus two. So pretty good. And the best case scenario for this deck, you drop Sram's Expertise, and then for free, you drop in something with converted mana cost three or less. You can do Sram's Expertise followed by Tempered Steel, all that for four mana. So essentially, all three of those servo tokens become three threes. And if you have like Steel Overseer out, you can get them bigger. So it gets pretty crazy. But it is a very luck-oriented deck where if you don't get the right cards at the right time, it just doesn't work out. But going along with this artifact creature spam theme, we have Signal Pest. Signal Pest has Battle Cry, so when it attacks, all your other attacking creatures get plus one plus zero. And Signal Pest can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. We also have ornithopters, three of them, just to kind of speed up the process of getting a bunch of creatures out. And we also have three cranial platings, which rewards you for having a ton of artifacts out. There's also Etch Champion. Etch Champion is a 2-2 for three. And if you control three or more artifacts, it has protection from all colors. So in most scenarios, it's unblockable. And best case scenario, you get cranial plating attached to Etch Champion, and you get a pretty powerful combination there. And because we're dropping these artifact tokens, Metalcraft's easier to go off. And speaking of Metalcraft, we also have Dispatch, which is also very, very good in our deck. With Metalcraft, if you control three or more artifacts, Facts, you exile target creature for one white mana. So it's like Path to Exile, but better, assuming we have all the artifacts. And to make sure we have enough artifacts, we have four Dark Steel Citadels, which I think everyone's familiar with from Affinity. And that's the benefit of being monocolors, that we have a little bit of leeway as far as colorless lands go. Because even with cards like Tempered Steel and Sram's Expertise, which cost two white, 14 planes is normally a good amount of planes to get there, which allows us to play this thing and also Blink with Nexus. Blink with Nexus is a man land, turns into an artifact creature token with flying. So it's good in a lot of scenarios where maybe we need like a third artifact for metal craft or they just board wiped us and all of our creatures are gone but blink with nexus is still there it's just very useful in a lot of situations and i think it's pretty necessary for this deck last one to mention here toolcraft exemplar it's a new card from kaladesh which when it attacks it gets plus two plus one until end of turn if you control an artifact and if you control three or more artifacts so basically metal craft it also gains first strike so in a lot of scenarios you get a three two first striker for one mana pretty pretty good and i think while watching a lot of people are going to make comparisons to affinity which is now the most played deck in modern so let's compare them and talk about why affinity is different than ours. First of all, it's five times the price. But besides that, it's built to be a really fast deck that goes off turn one, turn two. And that's definitely not our deck. Our plan is to get to turn four and get good value on turn four to swing in turn five with a lot of damage. So speed difference, affinity is way faster than ours. And it accomplishes that with Mox Opal, Springleaf Drum, both of which we don't have in our deck, which I am very grateful for because Mox Opal, $60. And online, $52. But there is some overlap with our deck. We do see four Steel Overseers, four Blink with Nexuses, four Dark Steel Citadels, four signal pests. They have four ornithopters, we have three, and they have four cranial plattings, we have three. They also have four galvanic blast, which parallels our four dispatches. But the main difference is, like I said, tier one affinity just goes off super fast and is meant to be more of like a hit or miss kind of deck. Like you either beat them out really fast before they get their cyber cards, before they set up, or you don't, you miss your opportunity and you're kind of stuck in this weird no man's land where it's really hard to finish from there. Another difference worth mentioning, they have four arcbound ravengers, which would actually work pretty well in our deck, but arcbound ravenger is more of a card that's meant for defense rather than offense. So say, for example, we have Archbound Ravager out with a bunch of other artifacts. They try and kill one of your artifacts. You can just sack it to put a 1-1 counter on Archbound Ravager. Or if you try and kill Archbound Ravager, you sack it, put its 1-1 counters on something else. So Archbound Ravager is very good at resisting your opponent's removal. So it could work in our deck, but it isn't really all that necessary. Because our deck's a lot slower, where if on turn 2 we drop Archbound Ravager, just one creature out just isn't that great. I mean, they are a lot faster. So turn 2, they're going to have their Mem Knights, they're going to have their Ornithopter, Signal Pest, you know, all the stuff they get from having Mox Opal and Springleaf Drum. So turn 2, Archbound Ravager 
is really good. But in our deck, turn two, it'll probably be the only creature out. And if they just hit it with removal, there's no other creature you can put this stuff on. So it just doesn't really fit in our deck. Moving on to Vault Scourge, it's pretty good in a tier one affinity, mainly because of Arcbound Ravager. I mean, we do have three Crano Plattings, but without Arcbound Ravager, Vault Scourge is kind of like a one, one for one with flying and lifelink. It just isn't all that great. With Still Overseer, it could be, but it's just on the border where I just didn't feel like it was worth it. They also have Master of Ethereum. Obviously, since we're mono white, we can't use Master of Ethereum. And in our deck, it'd be a little bit weird because we do have so many other three drops. But as you can see, our decks are quite different. And again, this deck is about $700. And the competitive difference isn't really as much as you think. I mean, if I were going to enter a big tournament, yeah, I would use Tier 1 Affinity. I wouldn't use our version. But there are a lot of situations where having a budget deck is really convenient. Say, for example, we have a group of friends that are all brewing new decks. Those brews aren't going to be all that competitive, most likely. And if they ask to play with you, and you bring your Tier 1 Affinity deck against them, like, they might not be your friend in the future. I don't know. I mean, they'll probably act like you're still their friend, but, you know, like, deep down, they'll be like, this asshole played Tier 1 Affinity against our brews, what a dick. So it's nice to have, like, a backup budget deck that you can play against people who are brewing. And the last thing to mention about the cost, the problem is a lot of these high-costing cards are kind of dead ends as far as making decks. Because if you look at the most expensive cards like Arcbound Ravager, $158 for a playset, what other deck would you use Arcbound Ravager in? Or Mox Opal. Like sure, Mox Opal goes in eggs and Lantern Control, but other than that, what would you use it in? And Inkmouth Nexus, you could use Infect, but Infect's kind of dead right now. So the most expensive cards in this deck don't really fit in other decks. So I think there's a pretty good argument to running our version as opposed to this, at least as a means for having fun and playing with your friends. So going back to our deck, taking a second look at it, our deck definitely isn't that fast, but there is good value. So while tier one of goes off like turn one turn two we make up for lost time by doing crazy stuff like sram's expertise followed by temper steel or sram's expertise followed by s champion and even though we don't have mox opal that kind of makes up for our lost play and even though we don't have arcbound ravager we do have creature tokens which are hard to hit with removal because if you drop in like three tokens lightning bolt can only hit one of them so we do make up for that deficit there moving on to sideboard the sideboard's kind of up in the air you can make some changes to it it was kind of hard making the sideboard because a lot of my go-to cards i couldn't really use like leyline of sanctity i really love that card for sideboard but I think the cost right now is like 30 bucks. So that was out. But we do have some budget cards here. We have Welding Jars. The cost, like, I think less than a dollar. Cost zero to play it. And you can sacrifice it to regenerate an artifact. And normally I'd use Rest in Peace, which is an enchantment for two. Removes all graveyards from the game permanently. But instead we have Relic of Progenus. And the downside to Relic is that it removes the graveyards once, but then the graveyards come back after the card's gone. But on the upside, it is an artifact. It does help with Metalcraft and Cranial Plating. And it's pretty cheap. I think it's a couple bucks right now. Also, as far as anti artifact, anti enchantment, there's a lot of different options. But one of the most underrated ones right now is Fragmentize, which is a new card from Kaladesh. I'm really surprised more people don't play it because for one white mana, you can destroy a target artifact or enchantment with converted mana cost four or less. But most artifacts and enchantments that are played are less than four. The only card that I can really think of is maybe, I guess, Batter Skull and Blue Moon, but that's not only really played that often. And usually what we're concerned about is Stony Silence, Ether Vial. Maybe we're going up against an affinity deck and we're going against their artifacts, something like that, but nothing really too big we're trying to take out. And plus it's only a few cents right now, so it's pretty cool. Also, I normally put in like one or two Path to Exiles, but that card is a bit pricey, so instead we have Sunlance. For one white mana, you deal three damage to target non-white creature. So it comes in handy against a lot of creature decks. Also, it's kind of an homage to Leyline of Sanctity. I put in Aegeus of the God. Not really the same, not really comparable, but it does give you Hexproof, which I guess helps against Mill and Ad Nauseam. But things like Storm, we can't really use it because like with Grape Shot, they could just direct one damage at him and the rest at you. So, so it doesn't really work, but it does stop Ad Nauseam, at least the Lightning Storm part. Also, to protect against Board Wipe, we have two Selfless Spirits. It is a little bit pricey. I think it's like four bucks right now. But after game one, they're going to see all those little creatures and they're going to think board wipe and self spirit helps you to prevent board wipe also to interfere with blue decks we have grand abolisher which is not really that necessary in the deck i think it's like five bucks each so if you want to pass on it i'd say pass but like against blue decks for the half counters i just like having a card that guarantees the counter won't come because like i just hate that paranoia of like playing something and thinking they could counter this if they wanted to but with grand abolisher it comes out they can't counter after that but again it's not really that necessary you can just cut it if you want also we have collective effort and i put this card in because going into game two you don't really know if if they have Stony Silence or not, which is a card that says activated abilities of artifacts can't be played. And it does interfere with our deck quite a bit. Not as much as Tier 1 Affinity, but it does hurt our deck because we do have Dark Steel Citadel and Steel Overseer. So going into game two, you don't know if they have or not. You could put collective effort in and use it for like a two for one or even a three for one in some cases where you could destroy target enchantment, but you could also put a 1-1 one -one counter on all your creatures. And since we are going wide, putting a 1-1 one -one counter on all of our creatures is pretty good. And it can also take out creatures like Tarmogoyf, which get pretty big. So it's kind of nice to have one in there. And we're pretty much ready to start our matches now, but I do want to mention cutting corners here 
Steel Overseer for a playset is about 50 bucks. It is quite pricey for a budget deck, but it's one of those cards where you really, really need it for the deck. If I could cut it, I would, because I want it to be the most affordable deck it could possibly be, but Steel Overseer without it, the deck just doesn't really come together. But the good news is Steel Overseer is pretty expensive, but nothing else is really that expensive. I think the rest of the decks like without the cyborgs like 40 bucks besides Steel Overseer. And even Tempered Steel is like, I think a buck or two right now. And if you want to make some more cuts, I mean, Blink with Nexus could go. I really liked it in the deck. If you have them, I definitely use them, but four of them might be pushing it. Like there are some games where turn three, you have like two, like this, this, and this out, and you want to play Tempered Steel and you can't. So that is an argument for cutting one or two of them. So you could get away with like maybe three or even two of them, but I like having four. And the rest of the deck's pretty cheap. I don't think there's really anything to complain about here. Definitely a lot cheaper than most modern decks, but you're probably tired of hearing me talk. So let's just go straight to the matches and I hope you enjoy them. Opening hand's not great, but I think we can make it work. Drop Exemplar and Ornithopter, pass the turn. All right, so Blue Moon or Storm it looks like, or it could be Just Guy. We pull Steel Overseer, not bad. We'll swing for three, drop the Overseer and pass the turn. Opponent hits the Overseer and we pull Cranial Plating. All right, well, might as well use Cranial Plating, attach it to the Thopter and swing for six. Opponent goes down to nine, pull Signal Pest, but we don't really have to do too much to finish it. So we'll turn Blink Myth into a creature, drop Signal Pest and we'll swing in with everything. Opponent drops in Snapcaster as a blocker, but we have Dispatch, so we'll use that so we can't block and that should be game. And it is, so pretty good. Going into game two, we'll get rid of three Cranial Plating and two Dispatch to put in two Selfless Spirits, one Grand Abolisher, and two Relic of Progenitus. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand's a bit janky, but I think we can keep it. Uh-oh, and they do have white in the deck. That's not good. That means they could have Stony Silence. But luckily our hand doesn't really have anything to do with activating artifacts, so we could be safe. We'll start with Ornithopter times two, and then drop the Pest, and next turn we'll plan on dropping Selfless Spirit in case they have Board Wipe. Whoa, an opponent misses the land drop. Ouch. Well, let's swing in with everything. And opponent uses Path to Exile, so it's a good thing we waited to drop this guy. So no attacks from us, and then we'll drop Selfless Spirit and pass the turn. Okay, opponent got a land there. Drop another Nexus, but uh, I want to drop this. But unfortunately, we don't have anything with three or less converted mana cost that we can drop with it. So we'll swing in for two. Opponent goes to 18. Do we drop this guy in, knowing he might have counter? I think we'll wait. That way, if he had remand, he won't be able to draw a card. Drops another land tapped. We'll drop our other Blink Myth. And I think we'll do the same thing as last time. We'll skip out on dropping this and instead swing in for four. And opponent attempts to lightning bolt one of them. Yeah, that's fine. Opponent goes down to 14 and we'll pass the turn. Ornithopter is really not doing too much this game. Oh boy, we do have this here, but he could use cryptic command. So we'll hold back, do the same thing as last turn. Swing in for four, and opponent pass that one. Sure. Opponent takes three, pass the turn. Please tap out. Shoot. Well, let's start by doing the same thing as last turn, but this time, if he taps out, we could drop this guy followed by this. So we'll swing in for three, and opponent drops Snapcaster, sure, to get back a Lightning Bolt, killing the land. Opponent goes down to eight, but they have two lands untapped. Do we attempt to drop this? We won't lose this if it is countered, but even if it's countered, I think it's not too bad because then next turn we can do this followed by this, and that's pretty mana efficient. So we'll attempt to do it, but he might, oh, and it goes through, what? He doesn't have remand? Uh, all right, Tempered Steel. Will we counter that? Probably not, because if you don't counter this, then like, I don't know. It does go through. Interesting. And opponent swings in for two. It's a little bit odd. I'm thinking he has Cryptic Command to tap out our guys, maybe. Do we want to block him? What's the point of blocking this guy? I don't think we really need to block him. Or maybe he's going to use the Cryptic to bounce this. Or maybe he has Board Wipe. I don't know. I'm overthinking this. He does have Board Wipe. All right, so we'll activate this guy. So our stuff's saved here. And they concede. All right, pretty good. I think we played that game exactly how we should have played it. And it's like waiting for the perfect moment to drop this thing followed by this. So not bad for our first match. And our deck is a budget deck, so to beat a deck like this, like Just Guy Control, is pretty satisfying. I'm not sure how many more we'll manage to win, but it's a pretty good start, so let's see how the rest of them go. Opening hand seems passable, so we'll keep it. Opponent drops Muta Vault, and will this be Aether Vial? Yes, it is. So it looks like we're up against Merfolk. Drop an Ornithopter followed by Toolcraft, and pass the turn. Breading Seas, it's fine. We could drop the Cranial Plating this turn, or we can drop this guy. I think the Exemplar is the right way to go. But first, we'll swing in for three. Nothing from our opponent. We'll drop this guy, and we'll pass the turn. That's odd. Nothing here from our opponent. So it could be saving it for this, or do they have Vendillion Click? We'll find out. Well, nothing so far, so probably no Vendillion Click. I wish we could drop this, but unfortunately this thing's there. I suppose let's drop Cranial Plating, attach it to this guy, and I think we should be fine attacking with everything, even with our land tapped out, so we can't do this, but these guys will get first strike. This guy has flying, so I think we're okay. Okay. Swing in for nine, and nothing for our opponent. They go down to eight. Let's see what they got. Vileson, Master of the Pearl Trident, and that's all. All right, and another Spreading Siege. 
sure. And opponent vials in this guy. No attacks. Wow, not having any planes is uh, not doing so well right now. I'm a bit worried about attacking, but I think attacking's our best shot here. I mean, they do have first strike, and I don't really know what he could do to change anything, so I think we're safe. We'll swing in with everything. And that would be lethal if he doesn't block. Opponent double blocks will prioritize the three drop guy. Opponent goes down to two. We can't play anything. We'll pass it back. And opponent concedes. All right. I'm going to get rid of two expertise cards just because I don't know how much white mana we'll have available with the spreading seas. Same thing with tempered steel. Get rid of two S champions, put in two sun lances, and three fragmentized, four spreading seas, and ether vial. And with that, let's go to game two. This card used to be pretty popular in Merfolk, but nowadays I think it's in something like one out of four sideboards of Merfolk. Opponent drops this guy, revealing Master of the Waves. All right. And even without ether vial, our opponent's going off pretty quickly here. We're in a bit of a tough spot here, especially with the land being bounced back. So drop Overseer, Signal Pest, but yeah, it's a lot of damage coming in. Pass it back to our opponent. Echoing Truth. Man, so much bouncing. Swing in for a lot, no blocks. We're at five, I don't think we're coming back. Yep, we're going to game three. And our opponent might have gotten rid of those spreading seas cards, seeing that we are only one color. So I'm gonna get rid of one fragmentized and put in an extra tempered steel. But otherwise, nothing else changes. Let's go to game three. Opening hand's okay. I Yeah, I guess the curve's all right, we'll keep it. But if they have Hercules Recall, it's just, oh man. Drop this, pass the turn, Curse Catcher. Drop another Ornithopter, but if we drop this thing now, well, this thing's gonna for sure counter it. So I suppose we hold back with it, just pass it back. All right, drops the Adept, revealing Pearl Trident. And we do pull another land. Should we drop Exhibition, Tempered Steel? I think Tempered Steel might actually be the safer play here, because if they use Turkle's Recall, these guys will all die. So we'll swing in for four. Although maybe it would've been better to drop that. I don't really know. Lord of Atlantis comes out. And I'd love to drop this, but ugh. All right, well, it is what it is. Let's swing in for four. Drop Exhibition and pass the turn. I mean, nah, man. I mean, these will slow him down if he doesn't have Hercules Recall. Will he fire it? No, Pearl Trident. All right. Turns Mute Vault into a creature. And opponent swings with all of these guys. All right, well, I think we should block here. And here as well wouldn't be bad. Oh, we don't really need to now, though. Maybe here as well to soak up some damage, buy us some time. I think that's the right play. Because once this thing comes out, I think we're in good shape. And if we pull something here with Converted Man Cost 3 or less, we should be good. <sighs> I mean, I guess it's okay. We'll swing in for four. Opponent goes to eight as well. And then we will drop this thing. And either they have Hercules Recall or they don't. If they don't, I think we got it. Turns this into a creature. Oh man, Hercules Recall or not? Let's see. And no attacks. That was odd. Drops Harbinger to bounce Ornithopter. Sure. This is really suspicious here. I mean, there's two lands on tap. Hercules Recall. I don't know. What choice do we have? Let's swing in with everything. Why? All right, well, we're not dead yet. We'll replay our hand and pass the turn back. Makes a bunch of creatures here and swings in with everything. Well, we'll block one at a time just to soak up some damage. So we take three and we pull a cranial plating. Oh, snaps. Oh, please don't counter it. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, no, we can play, we can play. Wait, wait, wait. No, wait, no, we can still do it. We can still do it. Wait, wait, can we? Yes, no, maybe so. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Yes. And they concede. Oh, whoa, <laughs> that was a close one. Oh man, that Hercules recall is nasty. Man, what a top deck though, oh man. So surprisingly, we won our first two matches against pretty decent decks, and we went up against Hercules Recall, so that's that's pretty cool. And like I said before, like most Merfolk don't even run Hercules Recall, so this Merfolk deck happened to have a pretty good chance of beating us, and even with Hercules Recall, the fact that our stuff costs close to nothing, and Tempered Steel is unaffected by Hercules Recall, gave us a pretty good shot. So yeah, I guess that's, that's just how it goes. We did pretty well. On to the next map. Opening hand curve seems pretty good, so we'll keep. It looks like we're up against Scred. Drop of Planes, pass the turn. Opponent drops Relic, and on our turn, we will drop Servo Exhibition, pass the turn back. Will we see Board Wipe? Yep, and an interesting one. Sweltering Suns. Probably the safest play here is to drop Tempered Steel now, and then next turn do this, followed by this. That way this thing has protection, and then pass the turn. There's Koth. Opponent hits us for four, so we will go ahead, drop Expertise, dropping in Etch Champion, pretty good value for four, and pass the turn. Please no Board Wipe. Ah! Oh. Well, at least our Etch Champion's safe. Never mind. Well, we're taking another four here. Ooh, another Tempered Steel. But we'll just drop Signal Pest, followed by a second Signal Pest, and pass the turn. Oh shoot, that's right, it's ultimate, it's active. Ah, no. <laughs> I think that's it for us, oh man. We just need to pull that card that says Destroy Target Emblem, right? Actually, wait a minute, we might have a shot here. If we drop in Expertise, opponent bolts that one, sure, and then drop in another Tempered Steel, it's gonna make it pretty hard for him to come back. Or not come back, but to finish us off, because that means he only deal four damage per turn to a creature or player. Yeah, we still have a shot. OK, 
Okay, opponent kills that man. So much creature removal. But we got 15 coming at him next turn. One away from lethal. And opponent passes it back to us. And we will swing in for 15. Opponent's at one, pass the turn. Opponent pings us for one and a second one. And our opponent concedes. Wow. So we actually survived the ultimate. Dang. I mean, that I mean, Blood Moon ultimate. Yeah, that was pretty tough. I mean, he had a ton of creature removal. Two board wipe cards. Man. All right, let's go to sideboarding. Going into game two, we're going to get rid of three dispatch cards, putting in Welding Jar and Selfless Spirits just to try and protect our stuff from being killed because he has so much creature removal. And with that, let's go to game two. Oh boy, opening hand, no planes, two lands. We do have a lot of artifacts and only one card that has white in it. I guess we keep it because I really don't like taking mulligans. And there's the planes. All right, looks like it worked out. So on our turn, let's drop this guy in and we're gonna hold back on Ornithopter in case he has the Lightning Bolt, which he most likely does. Gosh, what do we do? If we drop Steel Overseer, you know he's just gonna bolt it. So we could drop Servo Exhibition. Servo Exhibition is probably a bit safer, so we'll go that route. And we'll also drop an Ornithopter, which means our, we're kind of vulnerable to board wipe, but if he doesn't do anything, we put Cranial Plane attached to this next turn or this, I guess. I don't know, we'll just pass the turn like this. No place for our opponent. Do they have board wipe? Most likely, yes. No board wipe with Blood Moon. Well, we get lucky, pull a plane, which means Tempered Steel's coming out, and swing in for eight. Opponent drops Cough, makes four mana, and Shattering Spree. Yeah, probably, probably it was gonna come out sooner or later. All right, pull Signal Pest. All right, so what should we do here? Best play is probably Cranial Plating, attached to S Champion, and we'll swing with both. Signal Pest will go to Cough, S Champion will go at his life, and we know he's gonna block, but Still, 8-4 is pretty good. And will our opponent block? They do block to save Koth. All right. And we'll finish up by dropping Exemplar and pass the turn. And they concede the match. Oh my god. So even with the anti-artifact stuff, just like against Merfolk, we're still able to pull it out. That is pretty satisfying. Dang, this is pretty crazy. But there's like no way we can keep this up. I mean, we're 3-0 right now, and only one of those matches we've dropped a game. Like, our luck has to run out. So two more matches to finish the league. I don't think we can win both, but I guess we'll find out. But, you know, keep, keep your expectations low, because remember, this is a budget deck, and very rarely can a budget deck even compete with typical modern decks. So this is pretty crazy, I and mean, this is a lot better than I thought this deck would do. I mean, I was not optimistic about this deck when I first made it. I was just like, hell no. It's like no Mox Opals, no Arcbound Ravengers, just like, like, where's the hope at? But two more, let's see how it goes. Opening hand, two lands, no planes. We do have a pretty sweet zero, one, two, three here, except we can't really do that. But these three alone, I guess we keep it just for that. Let's drop these two guys, pass the turn. Noble Hierarch, we pulled this guy, not what we wanted, but might as well attack with these two, dealing one. Then we'll drop Steel Overseer and pass the turn. And if they don't have removal, then we should be okay. So it looks like they're Bant, another Noble Hierarch, and Selfless Spirit. Is this Bant Spirits? Could be in trouble soon. They could drop Collected Company next turn. I think the best thing though, swinging with these two guys, and our opponent decides not to block. And before damage is dealt, we'll make both of these guys creatures, and then use Steel Overseer, pump them, and let three go through. Opponents at 13, and no place for our opponent, so you know they have Collected Company, right? It'd be pretty risky if they dropped in some spirits with flying to block our guys. So we're not going to attack this turn. Oh, surprise, surprise. An opponent grabs two rattle chains. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. And no attacks from our opponent because we could turn this guy into a creature and block him. So we'll use Steel Overseer to pump our guys before the end of our opponent's turn. So as long as we hit a land now, if... Ugh, it's not a land. All right. So this time we'll drop a signal pest and go to our opponent's turn. Just do the same thing. No attacks. We have this guy to block. I hope it's not a second one. Oh my gosh. And the good news is if we hit another land, we can drop this guy and our opponent won't be able to block it. Geist, such a good card. But against us, not so good, because then we can just block it. I wonder if he has Steel the Godhead like our version did. Drog Skull Captain and Phantasmal Image, pretty good. Coming in as Drog Skull, but he has Hexproof, so man. Opponent swings with Geist, works really well with Noble Hierarch. 6-6 six, six coming in. We'll block the Angel like this, and you Steel Overseer to keep it alive. Man, with the Selfless Spirit though, ugh, this is really hard. And still no planes, but we do have enough to drop Etch Champion if he wanted to. Yeah, he probably need that for defense. But the Flyers alone could deal a ton to us. 18, they could deal 18 to us. We can block one of them and take 14. That would be lethal. Wow, I, I guess we just pass the turn back. We're kind of in a position where we can't really do anything because these guys are going to keep us alive. And well, here comes everybody. Ah, shoot, no matter how we block, I just realize it's lethal. Yeah, it's 14 here, and the rest have flying. Shoot, going into game two, we get rid of two S champions and two crown platings, putting in two sun lances and two selfless spirits, and hopefully we can just blow them out before they get set up. So with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand seems okay, so I guess we keep, at least we have planes this time. 
Please don't have stony silence. Probably should just brought in anti-enchantment to be safe. Mausoleum Wanderer, all right. No plays this turn, pass back. Next turn, we'll plan on dropping Dispatch on Spell Caller and hopefully get something we can drop with Shram's Expertise. Opponent swings in for three, sure. Do we attempt to drop the fresh one or kill this? Uh, we could have another Rattle Chains though. It would just blow up in our face. So let's try and just do the fresh one. If he flashes in a guy, he can sacrifice this, make it so we can't counter. Then we can follow up with this, I suppose. Another Spell Caller. We attempt this in response. Ugh. Then we're running out of options here. Do we fire dispatch? I think we're gonna, we're gonna lose this either way. I mean, this is this is pretty rough. I guess we'll just fire it now, get it over with. I mean, ugh, it's a bad choice because then he's gonna sack it. At least that buys us a little bit of time now that he has one less attacker. Opponent swings for four. They're actually at 11. Like, that's pretty low already. It really helps being monocolored. We got these guys, but I think it's a little bit too little too late. Drop as champion and then selfless spirit and pass turn to your opponent's turn, but we're getting pretty low. Please no collect a company. No, selfless spirit. And another rattle chain, sure. So opponent can deal 10 this turn, we can block one of them. Then we'll be a one, and we don't have any board wipe to turn things around. I guess we could pull a cranial plating. Ugh, that's the game. We always lose to like our previous deck. On our last deck with spirits, we lost to Rakdos Burn, and now with this deck, our first loss is to spirits. Well, that's the end of this match. I guess we'll see how the next one goes. Darn, it always comes to an end, and ah, oh, man. I guess it's cool to see spirits win though, right? Because it's very similar to our deck, minus, uh, well, we didn't have green in it. We didn't have the Noble Hierarchs and Collect the Company, but we did have Geist and, and the Spirit's Tribal thing going. So it's technically similar to our deck, and I guess it's pretty cool seeing similar decks do well. So good for them. Opening hand seems all right. We'll keep. Opponent drops Steam Vents tapped. We will do Toolcraft and Ornithopter and pass the turn back. And it's Storm. Not sure that we can outspeed him now, but we'll see what we can do. We'll drop in these guys. So we in for three. How far will our opponent get this turn? Uh, gifts ungiven. I hate having to make decisions here. Uh, this definitely goes to the graveyard, so that way I can only fire once. And I guess uh, Mana Morpho is also going to the graveyard. I mean, he's going to do a lot this turn either way. Oh, man. And finally, Grape Shot. And a second one. Great. On to game two. So going into game two, we're going to get rid of our four dispatch cards. He doesn't really have any creatures besides the Electromancer and Baral. And instead, we'll put in one Sunlands and three Relic of Regenitus. But there's not a whole lot we can do against him. I mean, I would have liked to have Leyline of Sanctity in the sideboard, but it's an expensive card, definitely out of budget range. And we do have this guy for sideboard, but, but with Grape Shot, they can just redirect one to him and the rest to us. So not really worth it here. So we'll get rid of these guys and go to game two. Will this opening hand cut it? I guess we'll find out. Drop Toolcraft, pass the turn. So this turn we'll drop Cranial Plating and swing in for three, but I hope we don't draw any more lands. I mean, it's, gonna, it's really tight to go against this guy because Storm is pretty fast. Steam Envisions and nothing else. All right, could drop another Cranial Plating and attach it, but probably safer to use S Champion and then attach both next turn. So for now, we'll swing in for three, drop Etch Champion, and then pass the turn. Baral, will he fire off stuff this turn? Not entirely, but he does have this guy. Well, let's find out how much we can do. With another Cranial Pudding, I think that should be it. Attach both of them to Etch Champion, and that's exactly 12, so swing with these guys. And we get the second game. All right, cool. No changes going into game three. Oh man, I don't know about this one. Four lands, eh, a lot of weak guys. I think we got a mullet. Oh, oh boy. I guess we'll keep, hopefully get a land on the scry. Yeah, we do. All right, drop signal pest and pass the turn. An opponent drops shattering spree, all right. Pull the tool craft, so I guess we'll drop this guy followed by pest and pass the turn. And our opponent missed the land drop, interesting. So the question is, do we drop this guy or this guy? Servo Exhibition is probably the safer play here. So we'll drop those guys in and swing with these two. Opponent goes down to 16. If you pull another land next turn, I feel like that would be game. He does hit a land here, but if we can get to four lands, drop this followed by this in the same turn, that should be it. It's champion. I think now's the time where we just drop Tempered Steel. Swing in with these guys. Opponent will be at one if he doesn't block. <laughs> Dang. But it's scary that this thing's out. I mean, you never know. I mean, with this guy out, he can play a lot of stuff this turn. And it looks like he might be going for it. Oh man, seriously? That's fine. If we pull another land, we can do this, followed by this in the same turn. And besides, he's at one. So better than firing off Grape Shot or Empty the Warrens, I guess. Oh, we do hit another land. All right, cool. So here comes big boys. Swinging with Exemplar. He has to block, otherwise he's going to die. Opponent blocks, see what our opponent can do. But without one of these out and only two lands, I don't think he can come back. And then that's where our opponent concedes. Cool. Well, not too bad overall. And it's pretty crazy to be able to beat Storm without Leyline of Sanctity. I mean, Storm is pretty fast. I mean, he did get mana screwed there, 
But still, I mean, four and one. And our one loss was the Spirits. So we beat Jeskai Control, we beat Merfolk, we beat Scred, and we beat Storm. And they're all pretty good decks. I mean, maybe not tier one decks, but like, they're pretty good. I mean, Spirits was like the jankiest one we saw, and that was the one that beat us. But we know Spirits is good. I mean, from our last deck, we know that Spirits is really good. But overall, I'm just like really surprised by this result. Like, this is not what I expected. Like, this deck, I did not have high hopes for at all. Like, the plan was that we were going to do this league, and we are probably going to go like two wins, three losses probably. And then I'd be like, well, it was budget, so what do you expect? And the moral is you always have to buy expensive decks, but I don't really know what the moral is right now. I mean, it, it did feel like we were lucky in a lot of these matches. And I think it's mainly the luck factor that makes tier one affinity superior to our affinity deck. Because with tier one affinity, it's pretty consistent, or you just slam a bunch of guys out really fast and you swing in, and hopefully you finish them off before they get their sideboard cards out. And while our deck has a lot of overlapping cards, like Overseer, Cranial Plating, Ornithopter, Signal Pest, Etch Champion, and in some cases Dispatch, for some reason, like our deck just feels more more luck oriented where if you hit four lands and you were able to drop this guy followed by this in the same turn like that's enough to turn things in your favor so in the same way affinity can get lucky and have like the perfect turn one play where they just dump their whole hand or close to dumping it we kind of make up for that lost time by doing it on turn four but to do it we have to be really lucky about it but like i said i mean this deck did a lot better than expected i mean the whole deck's like so cheap i mean 136 bucks for the entire deck is crazy and most of that cost is coming from the steel overseer which i feel like we really can't cut like steel overseer is one of those cards where if we didn't have that card, I don't think we could really pull off wins as easily. Because the whole point of dropping Servo Exhibition and the Expertise card is to get extra guys to make this more valuable. And like S Champion, I think it's a pretty good card. I feel like it works pretty well in our deck where Metalcraft goes off more than usual because we get extra guys. And that's pretty good. And for Blink with Nexus, like maybe you can cut it down to like two or something if you really want to go super budget. Or I guess none at all. But I like the card. I feel like there were some cases where they board wiped us and we were still able to keep our guys. Or like in our matchup against Jeskai Control, we were able to not play anything and just keep the blink miss coming in and that won us the game so it does help out and sideboard sideboard you can cut a lot of this stuff like selfless spirits I, I think it's pretty good like i would use it but you don't really have to use it you can just use like welding jars if you want a uh, grand abolisher it's not really that necessary it didn't really help us out that much and a lot of the cards that really that we use more than anything were pretty cheap like fragmentized came in handy sun lance is pretty good i don't know if we ever really used it a uh, welding jar you know things that are pretty cheap here so if you want to make a budget deck for whatever reason maybe consider this but i really do feel like there's a limit to how well it can do because it is pretty luck oriented where if you don't get the right play at the right time then it just kind of falls apart so i definitely would not enter this deck in any big tournaments because expecting this deck to fire off at the right time every single game every single match is just not realistic it's pretty unforgiving and i am pretty surprised by the results but i feel like if we continue to keep playing matches that luck's gonna wear off eventually to me it looks like more of a 45 percent win percentage deck so the fact that we won like 80 percent of our matches that can't be realistic i don't i don't know or maybe i just don't want to believe that like my expensive decks i've poured so much money into are at the same level as this deck where it's only took about like if you're going to build in paper 136 to 137 dollars and online's 38 bucks which is dirt cheap compared to a lot of the decks that we make i guess we could always come back to this deck and just see how it does in future matches and if we do return to this deck maybe we'll make a non-budget version just to see how well a non-budget deck can do because i mean leyline of sanctities would really help and i feel like leyline of sanctities is much superior to this guy and relic of Progenesis is good but also i feel like rest in peace is just superior to it like it's not super superior but there are there are cases where i much rather have rest in peace out than this because progenitus fires once and then they can just regain their graveyard again whereas rest in peace is like it's a done deal so there's that but there is a price difference there not a whole huge price difference like maybe like five bucks difference i think instead of sunlands you can use like path to exile but yeah sideboarding i mean you can decide what you want to do with sideboarding oh we also have this guy and this guy's fine i don't know i don't know. we never really used him but he's kind of cool because you can choose multiple things but overall i don't really know how i feel about this deck like i enjoyed it it did better than expected it didn't break the bank but anyway let's quit while we're ahead and if you're interested in seeing more budget modern videos in the future you can let me know by subscribing if you haven't already subscribed or just leave a note in the comments saying you want to see more of it but that about wraps it up again i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you have a great day